Beer. <laughs> Popping open a cold one during the game, floating down the river with your cooler bobbing alongside, or maybe a keg stand on a Friday night. However you enjoy it, you're in good company. In 2019, the beer industry brought in about $120 billion. That's from the National Beer Wholesalers Association. Now, three LGBTQ-owned small businesses are betting it's time now to tap into an expanded audience. So they're brewing up something new. Happy Pride! It's a month that features rainbows all around. Flags, sidewalks, even soccer uniforms, and Legos. While we respect the rainbow, what it stands for, you can't just slap rainbows on, on a product and expect support. Rainbow commercialism has become big business. The National LGBT Chamber of Commerce says the community has an estimated buying power of a trillion dollars. Many companies directly market to that demo during Pride Month. But year-round support is most important to many entrepreneurs in the LGBTQ plus community. In 2017, boyfriends John Moore and Jason Pasmino became inspired while having drinks at Julius, New York City's oldest gay bar. I mentioned that I can't believe there's not a, you know, a gay beer, that there's not a beer specifically created you know, for the queer community. And we kind of looked at each other, over our friends and everything, we looked at each other and both of us had the thought like, is that what we're gonna do? We just thought to ourselves, you know, we have a chance to really make an impact you know, create a new market, change the landscape of the beer market, which is toxically masculine and, and, and isolating two queers and women. Loretta Chung and Sarah Hallenquist have joined that beer market. They met organizing the Dyke Bar Takeover. <laughs> With only 15 lesbian bars left in the whole country, according to the Lesbian Bar Project, Chung and Hallenquist say they felt the need to take over various straight bars in New York for pop-up parties, giving a safe space geared toward the queer woman community. Those parties paved the way to Dyke Beer. Dyke Beer is almost, a, for us definitely, but almost a campaign on a can. And coming to our website, you learn a little bit about queer history and lost Dyke space and, you know, the need for our visibility. You might think the name is a derogatory term, but the point is to take away the stigma. But we're trying to reclaim it for ourselves and identify as it and really empower ourselves from like the pain of that word. It's definitely a beer made for our community and queers and allies that want to support us. Lily Waite identifies as a queer trans woman. She started queer brewing in London in 2019 to further provide visibility while raising money for local charities. Making people feel seen and feel part of something and, and feel recognized in a way that they're often not. I've never been afraid of any pushback or any criticism because of it being a sort of quote unquote queer product. The point is to combat that by just existing. The introduction of these other brands is, is exciting for us because it is uh, proof that this is, you know, a market that needs to exist and thrive and there's room for us all to do that together. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.